What's up, everyone? How's it going today? This is Chris from CD Baby. Hope you're doing well. Kevin is going to be uh, joining me in just a second. And um, although we usually promise office hours, I think this might be closer to office half hours because we do have meetings we have to get to at some point. But uh, let me get Kevin on here real quick. <clears throat> hey, hey. Hey, I like to pretend like I'm in the green room, like having a beverage. You're while off. You do the yeah. intro. <laughs> <laughs> what is the green room stocked with in your imagination? Uh, uh, you know, whatever you whatever you want, whatever your heart. All green M and M's. Yes, exactly, exactly. We should do our usual shout out and say, uh, yes. if, if folks who are watching, please tell us who's watching, where you're watching from. We we have a global community here at CD Baby, so it's cool to see far and wide people tuning in. Yeah, just post in the comments, and we are here to take your questions. So uh, you can put your questions in the comments as well. Anything related to music promotion, mu music distribution, um, you name it, we will try to answer it. Yeah. Oh, we got Keith, Keith Thompson from New York City. What's up, Keith? I'm also going to put in the comments a link. Hey, Bill from Ventura, California. Uh, who, Jim, Jim from Arkansas. Arkansas. Whoa. Oh, Rhode Islander. John, Rhode I, I grew Island. up in Rhode Island. Um, I'm going to put a comment in the comment section here, um, which is a link to a live stream Kevin and I are going to do basically, well, next Thursday, almost around this time, uh, yes. where we're going to talk you through the entire release plan for a new album or single you're putting out from kind of all the distribution stuff, uh, pre-planning for promotion, all that kind of things. We'll go step by step through that. So if you're interested, I'm going to post it here and then you can click the, um, there's like a little get reminder button. Just hit that and uh, yeah. Yeah. And the topic will be, you said our release plan generator, correct? I didn't even mention that. I just oh. said about planning a release. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it'll be a good one. It'll be a good one. We got Thomas from North Georgia. Uh, and we got Vegas in the house, Barbados. Whoa, Barbados. Jimmy and Barbados. Wow. A Abigail in Nottingham, England. Um, here's a question, Kevin. You might might know the answer. Um, how do we explain the fact that some songs end up on one tier of Amazon Music uh, subscription? And uh, yeah, there's different tiers. Do you want to explain that? Oh boy. Uh, I could ask somebody and get the the detailed correct answer. I don't think they'll get back to me in time. Um, I know for a while it was songs that were cleared for publishing. So if you had CD Baby Pro, uh, that increased the chances of getting included. But it's it's curated by Amazon, and I think it's things that um, have more streams and such. I could get a I could find. Find out. Uh, let me let me ask. Uh, yeah. While we're talking, I know that it's curated to some degree, but it's not like they're listening to track every track and putting it in there. Um, I think they're just trying to take a smaller grouping of songs that they think people will like and try to convert them to the full on service. Keith is asking something we get asked a lot. It's about Beatport, um, and CD Baby has an enormous network of of music partners that's not one of them that's one of the rare ones and kevin might have an explanation for it but it basically has to do with we work with uh services that take our whole catalog and and that's a very genre specific one yeah they have they only want uh, like edm and uh you know certain types of genres and there's a couple reasons why we want we want it to be you know they take our whole catalog but also uh we don't listen to every song so we can't verify that the tracks we're sending them are actually edm even though they're labeled edm or whatever they're labeled uh and so there's problems with that as well so we haven't figured it out yet maybe in the future but you can go sign up with them directly and have your music on beatport uh that's my best advice there i like this comment from the original rhodes islander here Hmm. I did not know that. Is that true? Is that where the name came from? Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Uh, I can't say whether it's true that this person lives in on roads, but uh, let's see. 
26 G hip hop has an enormous catalog of songs and you want to know if we can distribute them. Yes. Uh, CD baby works with labels as well. So we're happy to, um, help you out with your distribution. Yeah. And I, th if it's easier for you, uh, to create sub albums or like album chunks of that giant catalog, uh, I think 50 is the maximum tracks you can put on an album. And so you could make a bunch of albums with 50 tracks. So it's, quicker and easier to get them out. Uh, Tommy's wondering, I have assigned ISRC codes, but one of my older releases on CD Baby has different codes. Can these be changed? They can. I don't know why you would want to. That would be my main. If you change them all, your play counts are going to go away. Um, so... And I'm not sure if you would have to re-release them in this case, or they can just be updated. Uh, but you, either way, your play counts would go away. So my bigger question would be why. If I would just say, if you have your own ISRC codes, just use them moving forward because it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, but unless there's some really specific circumstance where you absolutely have to do this, I'd say just leave the ones, like Kevin said, just leave it alone. Uh, here's a, we could have 10 different answers for this. What's the best, fastest way to get to a million views <laughs> of a video on YouTube, uh, on Facebook? Uh, yeah. I, um, uh, I, I, I was laughing because I'm like pay a bot service. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did Don't say the do best that. way. Don't they said do the best that. way. The best that might be way. the fastest way, but not the yes. best way. Okay. The best way. Well, you know, uh, there. What I would say is, uh, you got to think about building an audience is something that happens over time. Creating content, making sure that it's something that does well. Like if you're wanting to get videos to that uh, level of viewership, as an independent artist, say you're starting with not a very big audience, you're gonna have to cultivate that audience. It's not something that's just gonna happen overnight. Sure, you could post some video that goes viral. Uh, the chances of that don't seem to be as likely these days, unless it's something like on TikTok, and the value of that could be questionable. Uh, meaning that does it really did it really do anything for your music when it was all said and done? Uh, for some the answer would be yes. For others, it might be no. Uh, but really, it's about building an audience that likes what you're doing, and over time, as it grows, you will get to that level. Uh, we, I don't, I haven't seen an artist like just drop a single with an official music video that gets that type of sign uh, significant amount of views without something else going on in their career, um, and having built something over time. Yeah, I mean. The question itself, I feel like, has a little bit of a kind of a vague vanity metric as its goal. And I would just say, rather than getting a million views, concentrate on getting really valuable views. You know, even if that's just 10,000 views from people who actually are so well targeted that they fall in love with your music and, you know, some small percentage of them go on to buy a CD or whatever. So think about more quality than quantity. Um, Somebody asked, I'm not seeing the question. Somebody asked if we have support in Africa. Uh, we do have a rep in Africa. His name's Zakeli. He's pretty new. He's in West Africa. I forget the exact country that he's in. I know he travels a bunch in a lot of the countries in West Africa and is kind of covering uh, a good portion of them. But uh, yes, we do have somebody there. And that reminds me of our disclaimer that because I can't find that, see who that question was. I saw it and they they went on by. Chris and I see this giant list, this feed of questions and comments that roll by. So if we miss your question, you are more than welcome to ask it again. Uh, saying you didn't ask answer my question isn't helpful because we'll see that comment and we won't see your question. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, you know, the the list, the feed keeps scrolling through and we see it from both YouTube and uh, Facebook together. So uh, we're not necessarily ignoring you. Uh, it just sometimes it's hard to keep up. So feel free to ask again. Well, first, uh, hello, Joy. Uh, Joan has a question about the MLC. Will that change anything about how CD Baby does business? Not really. We're already partnered with the MLC um, through our CD Baby Pro Publishing 
uh, service. And if people don't know what we're talking about, the uh, the publishing service we have helps songwriters collect the royalties they're owed for owning their own compositions. Um, a lot of which are more difficult to get, and the streaming services aren't set up to just pay them to your distributor uh, they way, the way they do for your sound recordings. So we set up the CD Baby Pro Publishing to help songwriters collect those royalties. The MLC is an organization that is recently established in the United States to get one particular kind of publishing royalty uh, from streaming in the US. So uh, we'll get those royalties for you if you're already signed up with CD Baby Pro. Uh, it's also, it's a valuable service, this MLC, uh, organization, but it's not one of those things where you could sign up with that and all your needs are met because it's U S specific. It's not going to go out and get those mechanical royalties worldwide. Um, so yeah, if, if, um, you're using CD baby pro, you do not and should not register directly with the MLC because we're already taking care of it for you. Uh, if you go down a couple comments, Amber Lynn Browning has a question after distribution. Can I change preferences to streaming also? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, not exactly sure what preferences you're wanting to change. Um, the easy thing is if you had limited your distribution, like you said, I just want Spotify in the UK, or I just want Spotify in the US or Japan, broadening up, that's easy. We just deliver it to all the other services. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what preferences you're wanting to change. So uh, it, but you can, if you, I know a lot of times artists will just go, I don't know about all these other services. I'm just gonna add this, but yes, you can go back in. Um, it does take time for those changes to take place. And speaking of, uh levels of distribution uh, before i answer this question we should also say cd baby is now getting your music onto triller which is a popular social video app kind of like TikTok. um if you're already distributing with us at that streaming level you know if we've gotten your music onto spotify and apple music it's automatic we'll send it to triller for you there's no extra cost it's included so just want to make that announcement too yeah um, we never charge you for additional uh platforms we want your music to be everywhere we want you to be making the most money possible and earning and that's why we get it out there yeah so john i mean it, to summarize john's question he's basically wondering if he's gone through easy song licensing to license cover what is he covered for so uh yes first of all you're right uh spotify apple music a lot of the streaming platforms are setting aside royalties for the songwriter or for the publisher and paying them through the MLC, through other uh, collection societies. So you don't really need to get a uh, mechanical license for those the way you used to 10 years ago when it was all about iTunes. The, the places where you still currently at least need to have a mechanical license secured for your cover song would be iTunes, I think the Amazon download store, mm -hmm. any place where you're having an actual like MP3 or Wave or FLAC download. Um, if you're that selling might, it on Bandcamp, you're supposed to pay for that too. Even if you're giving it away as a free download on your own website, no money is exchanged. Technically, you still owe the publisher money. Uh, as far as iTunes and Amazon, I mean, I know there's rumors that that practice might be changing soon, but for now, you still need. I've heard uh, it go back and forth, so who knows? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> until, it, until until it's certain, I would. If you're doing cover songs, it's good to go ahead and get that secured. There's a question here uh, from Abigail Moore. Uh, that's Abigail Moore. There you this go. One. If you upgrade titles you already have being distributed on CD Baby from Standard to Pro, does that backdate your streaming royalties? I will say yes, but it depends. So if I distributed an album last year and I upgrade, yes, we can still, um, in almost all cases, get all the the existing publishing royalties that are out there for you. Uh, the publishing money moves very slow compared to uh, what we experience with like getting Spotify payments and all, you know, your digital download store payment. All those things come really fast compared to how publishing money works. So uh, typically we can go back a couple years and collect for most things. Uh, what you don't want to do is have something sitting out there 
generating a lot of income, doing well, and for years and years and years, and then sign up uh, because then it gets harder. Um, it becomes more challenging to go find that money because after a certain while, that money gets paid out to, you know, a lot of major labels. To famous people. Famous people that don't need your money. Here is one from Sandra. If I release a song in the public domain, do I still have to license it? No. If you're talking about getting a cover song license, you don't have to do that. It's technically not a cover song. You own your recording of it. You don't have to pay anyone if it's truly in the public domain. So just make sure of that. We all own it together as the public. That's a nice way. I mean, I know that's the literal way, but it's also a really <laughs> nice way to interpret that. Patrick's wondering about uh, separating... Uh, accounts in CD Baby. I'm pretty sure that's possible. Something you probably have to initiate through our help center. They're going to yeah. need to verify your identity and, you know, make sure it's all legit. Um, so, so go to CD Baby's help center for that. Uh, Jerry uh, has a good question about YouTube. Uh, just, yeah, there you go. This if one? the accounts created in YouTube are monetized, does the artist receive royalties from the music? Uh, at first, when I read this, I took the question one way, but now I think it might be uh, different than what I was thinking. So I'm taking it that you're asking if uh, a YouTube channel that's out there that you don't own is monetized, if your music is used, if you will get some of the money. The answer is yes. Um, and it's yes if you make the channel too. But uh, yes, you do get some of the money. That's what our YouTube content ID program is. Uh, what happens is YouTube... Uh, makes a fingerprint of your track and then they match that against all the music on YouTube. And every time there is a match, uh, you make money from the usage of that song in that video when ads are played on that video. Hey, while we're on the topic, do you want to address this one also about YouTube? Why does CD Baby? Uh, why does YouTube have a CD Baby as the owner of my copyright when I just have a standard account? I am the publisher. Uh, I'm assuming you mean standard versus CD Baby Pro. YouTube monetization is not related to our publishing offering. Uh, it is a separate. Uh, in your account, it says social video monetization, and if you click on that, you'll see Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and those are the big social video monetization programs. So, uh, if you checked the box on YouTube, we will, uh, go claim your tracks on your behalf. Uh, just like I mentioned in order to monetize those assets for you. Uh, the, the message that they put on the video, uh, it's, it's better than it used to be, but it still feels a little, uh, overreaching compared to what's really happening. Uh, all it is is you, you authorized to administer this track on your behalf on YouTube. So we are saying, hey, YouTube, we're administering this track. So all the money for this track should go to us so we can pay the proper artist. So that's what's happening. Oh, uh, sorry. We're, I was not, at... we're not really the copyright owner. That's where the messaging goes, goes awry. It says <laughs> copyright owner. We're not. We're just a, uh, an administrator on your behalf. Did you uh, mention when you were just talking, sorry, I was looking at the comments. Did you talk about art tracks that are delivered by CD Baby? I did not. I don't know if that has a, um, still has a little message that says, you know, this music is here on YouTube, delivered by CD Baby. Um, if that's what you're talking about, don't worry about that. That's all good. We're, we're distributing to YouTube music as part of your distribution. Uh, let's see. Mr. John and Friends is a big fan of Small Town Poets. Thanks, Mr. John. Nice. Um, his question was about mar migrating to other distributors. Uh, we see people migrating all over the place. Pe lots of people come to us. People, you know, they lose their way and they want to go test other waters and they always come back. <laughs> They always come back. They always come back. I mean, because uh, you got you get Chris and I. That's <laughs> just here awkwardly answering your questions on Facebook. Yeah. 
Yeah. And YouTube. Speaking of yeah. YouTube, we yeah, have a YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we got a question from YouTube. How do you drop drop a deluxe album through CD Baby Pro? So, if I understand this correctly, are you wanting to just do kind of a bonus release? You've already put the the the, the first album out, and now you've got the deluxe version with extra stuff. Maybe it's got more tracks, special stuff. That's fine. You just distribute that as a separate album. It would need an, a separate UPC from the original version of the album. Uh, and distribute it like normal uh, with CD Baby Pro. Um, if it's got sort of bonus songs that you want to be covered for the publishing, just sign those up for CD Baby Pro. It doesn't matter that some of those songs are already represented on your previous submission if you did that with Pro as well. So, yeah, I, I don't know where you're on the comment list, but there's another question from YouTube uh, that I know you probably have the answer for. Uh, from Chris and Shirley Williams, if I feature a different artist who sings the majority of one of my songs, are they eligible for royalties, credit via platforms uh, such as Sound Exchange? Um, how do I do the artist right? So, first off, uh, Chris, I know you know a lot about the different designations that you can encounter in the distribution process. Yeah, so I'm not seeing the comment, but yeah, basically the first thing you want to do is start by talking to that person that collaborated with you because um, they might have very specific requests of you. They might not want to be credited. It's they true. might definitely want to be credited. And so you want to make sure you're, you know, being respectful of their wishes. I have a um, someone who just sang on my new album. She's an amazing singer. Um, I would love to list her as a featured artist or as a, you know, sort of a, um, what's the other, the, the multiple primary artist thing so that I benefit from my songs being shared with her audience. However, she guests on people's music all the time. And she said, you know what? I do this so much that like, it's kind of diluting my own music. Um, so I'd just rather you just mention me in the press and put it in the liner notes of the album, but not put it on Spotify and stuff. So respecting those wishes. So yeah, talk to the person first. If um, they tell you that they want to be listed as a featured artist, that's super easy to do. You just, uh, when you're signing it up in CD Baby, you can do that at the track level. Just list them as a featuring artist. You could also do something called a primary, uh, multiple primary artists, which is you and that singer are kind of sharing the bill for that song. Uh, yeah, we have all those options when you sign up your music in CD Baby. As for royalties, um, if you wrote the song and you recorded it, you are technically set up to get all the royalties from CD Baby through pro publishing and distribution revenue. If you want that person to get paid something else, you guys work that out and you can pay them, um, you know, basically after you get your money from CD Baby, work it out however you want. With Sound Exchange, they can get listed as an, as an artist or as a session player and, and get paid that way as well. Did you have something to say, Kevin? Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned it because I was also looking at the comments, but just wanted to highlight the fact uh, that part of the reason for the conversation, like you said, is uh, because when the artist that you mentioned said it's diluting my music, is there certain designations when you sign it up and if you select a featured artist, there's certain ways you can do it where it shows up on their artist profile as well. It can be a great way to collaborate with two people and both capitalize on each other's fan bases, but uh, you know, we, my band, Small Town Poets, we did this where we had a featured person um, uh, sing on one of our tracks and we did it in the way so it wouldn't show up on their profile as one of their releases. So there's, there's ways to, to just make sure everyone's expectations are in alignment. Um, and yeah, there we have it. Uh, just a reminder that these uh, the the what the feed of questions and comments Chris and I see goes by really fast and it's hard for us to manage this whole list. We're using a software that aggregates it all. So if we didn't ask your uh, answer your question, um, please just ask it again. Uh, telling us we didn't answer the question, we we won't be able to go back and find it because uh, we're not in Facebook or YouTube looking at the same thing uh, everyone else is. But uh, so yeah, we won't. We won't be upset if you just ask it again, but um, <laughs> we we oftentimes can't see it. Uh, did you? Have uh, oh crap! It just flew by as I was about to <laughs> put it on screen. It was just Miles Morgan was saying he liked our um, time wasters episode of our our podcast, which was the most recent episode we did, and then had an interesting point where he was sort of saying like I juggle with 
uh, not juggle. I struggle with knowing how much time to put into learning covers and practicing sort of my gig stuff because I guess he makes most of his money playing uh, assisted living facilities versus like recording his own material and putting it out into the world, which is not paying the bills for him. But anyways, I, I don't think we have the answer for that, but I thought it was just an interesting, yeah, interesting predicament of n not always knowing where to put your effort. Speaking of the DIY Musician podcast, if you're watching this, you would probably enjoy the DIY Musician podcast. It's available in Spotify, in uh, the Apple podcast app, and everywhere you listen to podcasts, it's available. And the last episode featured Cranky Chris. Um, <laughs> so I think the last I've six lots episodes. Of, I've got lots of feedback on that. Uh, people loved it. <laughs> um, so yeah, check that out. Uh, and, and Craig here gives an endorsement. So thank you, Craig. Uh, here's a question. Oh, you, you've, uh, oh, uh, oh, go ahead. You got one on the screen. So I don't know if, if, if William is, as this is a marriage proposal, but, um, <laughs> I'm curious, William, what are you trying to propose to us? If, um, if it's about just whether we distribute your music, we, we don't make those, um, decisions. We're happy to help all artists get their music out there. Uh, if it's something beyond that, let us know in the comments. Um, also, I, I see a question here that was related to something we were just talking about. Uh, I think the name, oh, Thana, uh, Thanasis. I think that's the person that's in Greece, and that looks like a Greek name to me. Uh, not that I know Greek, but anyway the question is i see a lot of new tracks on spotify that use band names as featured artists that have nothing to do with the track itself is that a scam in order to be featured on a release radar and get plays uh i have not seen this but absolutely never do this <laughs> you will get taken down from the spotify platform so if you're seeing that yes they are they are trying to manipulate and play games with the system in order to uh, do exactly what you're saying. Does the only mean, like, famous band names, like someone just puts like Radiohead or Beyonce or something on their track? Is that you know what? what he's the noticing? only time the only time I saw this happen was um, I'm a fan of a band out of the UK called Travis, and they hadn't made anything in a while, but I'd heard that they were you know working on stuff. And randomly, Release Radar, you know that weekly email they send featured Travis has a new song and I went and it wasn't a artist uh, like separation issue. I, it was the first time I'd encountered what he's talking about. I think it's the only time I've encountered it, but it was like, this is somebody who just named it this trying to, <laughs> they went famous enough, but not too famous. So it was obvious. <laughs> Maybe it was uh, just some dude named Travis. That no, it was wasn't. Band, I think Travis. I, because uh, after I, Figured it out. I'm like, this is a, I, that was a scam. But yes, don't do those things, please. Uh, you're chasing the wrong thing if that's what you do. Uh, Nexo Beats has a question about collecting all the royalties owed as an audio producer. So I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of royalties you could potentially be, be getting. And I'm not sure if you are a producer who then um, owns your own recordings and you're releasing them yourself as if you're a label or if you're producing for other artists and then they go and they own the, or I should say they control the recording. Um, in, if that's the case, you definitely need to work some agreements out with those artists. If you feel like you should be cut in on, on songwriting composition royalties, or if you should be getting points for your production work, um, I would work that out case by case when you're working with artists. However, if the first thing is true, if you're basically making all your own stuff and you're putting it out yourself, uh, CD Baby is going to get you a, a huge chunk of all the kinds of money that's out there. We'd be getting you YouTube content ID revenue, um, so, social video monetization, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Triller, all that stuff, as well as all the um, streaming and download platforms we'd send your music to. Um, so hopefully that answers it. Yeah, uh, there was another question uh, that was about monetization. Let me see where it went. Um, shoot. Oh, I'll find it in a second. Oh, wait, here it is. Damien J. Brennan uh, says, hey, guys, love CD Baby, but can you elaborate more on how streaming works as per royalty payments? 
Here's something that may uh, surprise you. In reality, it's not a per, uh, per stream payout. Uh, what gets called as a per stream payout is really an average per stream payout because uh, the way it works is there's a pool of money that comes in from subscriptions and then there's a bunch of usage from fans listening to music and that gets divided up every month uh, based on a lot of metrics, a lot of things, a lot of variables, whether it was a free account or a paid Spotify account, whether it was bundled in with their phone, um, whether all sorts of things, whether it was like a call, I don't know if there's college account, maybe colleges still give just like discounted accounts. I've seen like a uh, family plan makes a difference. So all these things factor in to why you, what you ultimately get paid because there's different rates for various things. Um, and that's why the buying fake streams and things, you know, fraud is such a big problem that uh, Spotify will kick you off the platform if you if you uh, try any of those services because uh, it dilutes what real artists get paid uh, or for real streams, I should say. So anyway, there is information online uh, how that works. Uh, you won't find it on our website because uh, we're not really allowed to post point by point how these payouts work, but you can find it online and it'll, it's very different than what most people think. They think, oh, I get paid X every time I get streamed. And it's like, no, that's not really what's happening. Craig's wondering how often you should put out music. And I think the, the first answer is as often as you want without going insane, like there's plenty of people who tell you like stick to the every six week schedule or six stick to the every eight week schedule. That's fine. If you can do that, great. But um, I think the second part of your question is more important. Like I wouldn't disappear for more than like six to eight months. Um, I don't think you need to have a song out every month or anything like that. You know, great if you can, but not disappearing is more important than like yeah. sticking to some methodical thing. It's funny because um, I always uh, I always use U uh, two as the example of what not to do. Even when before the streaming world existed and we had more music than we knew what to do with, they will drop an album, and as a fan, you know you, uh, which I am a fan, uh, you'll anticipate that album. You'll get excited for it. You'll hear it. You'll have, you know, people will have a reaction across a spectrum. If you loved it, great. You can live on it for a while. If you've got, eh, as a fan of you too, it's like, well, they're not going to be back for another five years with something new. So I guess I just need to move on with my life. <laughs> so I think there's a balance of allowing time to build anticipation, but at the same time, not disappearing. And so all momentum and feeling of connection is lost. Um, I think for a lot of artists, we're seeing dropping a single every couple months that leads to an album. And then, you know, I always like to follow up with an album with material that relates back to the album, like remixes, acoustic versions, uh, fan versions or whatever. Um, but you know, the idea is that you want to be fresh enough in people's minds. You don't want to overwhelm them. Like, you know, artists that do like a track a day or a track a week, it's just too much for me. I think a lot of people would probably be in that same boat. Um, I have to get going soon. So maybe we can Chris, do like a couple oh. more I, uh, oh. questions. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Dave King. Any tips on growing your email list? Yes. Okay. First, no one wants to download it. <laughs> the like, uh, Hey, join my list and get an MP3. I don't know why so many artists still do that. We don't want your MP3s. So you have to think about, um, making something an experience uh you know an unlisted video something people want they can't get elsewhere and that really feels connected to who you are as an artist and and uh i'd say also use your list the more you use it i think you'll get in a rhythm of discovering your voice oh did did i disappear or did you i think i disappeared oh well hello hello i was just saying uh actually using your email list is a good um, way of learning how to grow it because people like sort of establish 
their voice and they figure out the more they send emails, the more, uh, the more they figure out what their audience actually wants from their email stuff. So then I feel like just by using it, you set yourself up, um, to more smartly be able to attract people to it. Um, but definitely stop leaning on the free MP3 bait. It's very old. I was not here for most of that, but I'm sure it was poetry. It's just mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, someone asked if you could drop the, yes, the release I, generator. Let's see here. You should, any, anyone who's planning a release, which I assume is. is all of you at some point, we have this great new tool that's free, free to anybody. You don't even have to use CD Baby. It's called, uh, you just go to release.cdbaby.com and it's our release plan generator. And one of the biggest mistakes artists make is they don't properly plan the release. And there's so much opportunity for you in the release process. Uh, things that won't exist after the music comes out. Um, and we were just talking a minute ago about, I, I mentioned anticipating new music it's like you want to capitalize on the feeling of anticipation people have when they get excited about something new coming out this release plan generator helps you understand the timelines needed for various things uh that you might want to uh try whether it be bigger press local press uh, using the spotify pitching tool um setting up a pre-save all those things it gives you a timeline that, that changes based on the, the release dates you put in there. And it's really just a helpful tool to make sure that you're not missing some key things that you will regret later. So uh, if I got to run, so maybe right, we, we can, can make this, this one as, a, so Alan, we have to correct your um, assumption. CD Baby only closed our own music store. We still do physical distribution. So if you are making CDs, uh, first of all, we're happy to help make your CDs. We still have our manufacturing, uh, CD manufacturing uh, website. And then once they're made, we are still happy to warehouse them. We'll ship them to customers, do all your order fulfillment like usual. The only difference is people are going to be buying them through Amazon or you know online retailers who do that as their main thing. Online retail wasn't our main thing and hardly anyone was using it. Uh, 90 something percent of our uh, of the units we were shipping were being purchased through Amazon. So True we're like, story. why are we doing this? It's costing us a lot for something that's not really benefiting anyone. So we closed our store, but we're still happy to help with your physical distribution. All right. Well, Chris, it sounds like you need to run. Uh, just go. a reminder, uh, head on over to cdbaby.com to, you know, if you got tracks to release or, you know, a reminder, if you haven't logged into your account in a while, go do that as well. Because last week when we were doing this, someone logged in and realized that they had had a sync placement that we'd gotten them and they hadn't even <laughs> noticed it. And they, they were freaking out. So go log into your account, be up to date with what's going on in there um, and check out release.cdbaby.com. And next week we will actually be doing a Facebook live that talks about that tool and the idea of properly planning your release. So indeed. And I think it. William is, William might be getting on my case because I didn't answer him. I didn't see his responses. Anyways, I'll have to go tomorrow morning and check this feed and, and I'll try to okay. get back to you. All right. But uh, see you everyone. See you next Take week. It easy.